Hey, what's up guys? Working on a 2015 Ram 1500. Gonna be installing some airlift airbags along with the onboard air compressor. So I just wanna go over what I'll be installing. Um, so got these airlift low litter 5000 ultimate uh, airbags. Um, you can see this supports up to 5,000 pounds. And with this being the ultimate, it does include the um, bump stop built inside the airbag there just to help keep you from bottoming out um and then also got the uh, airlift wireless one onboard air compressor as well um, i got both of these off of amazon i'll put a link in the description for both and taking a look at the airbags here so this is the 88365 you can see for the ram 1500 um right off the bat what i like about these is they still include paper instructions. Uh, most places nowadays, they just give you a QR code you scan and then you gotta pull it up on your phone or computer or whatever. Um, it's nice to have the written instructions and they actually come in color as well. So pretty good uh, description on how to install this kit. So I will be following these instructions when I show you guys how to install these. Um, and if you take a look inside there, you can see it includes the airbags, airlines, your brackets, all that down below there. And for the compressor, you can see this is gonna be just the standard duty one, and this is just a single path, uh, which means both airbags are gonna be aired up to the same pressure, you can't change that. Um, they do make a dual path, if you wanted that, that's for more guys that have like a in-bed camper, and the camper weighs more on one side than the other, so you gotta adjust the airbags differently. Uh, but the guy I'm installing this for, he just has a pull behind camper and uh, it's been squatting a little bit when he pulls out so he wants to get uh, some airbags just to bring that up and then you can see this is uh, Bluetooth so it does come with this remote and then you have a few different settings uh, you can choose on there which we'll look at later um, but taking a look at it you can see this also includes written instructions that are in color as well and then it includes Pretty much all you need to install this um, manifold and compressor all that's down below here and then you got you all your wiring and uh, your T's for your airlines so uh, let's go ahead and get started so we will need to uh, jack up the rear of the vehicle so I'm just gonna take a block here put that in front on the driver's side front wheel next grab a jack we're gonna go ahead and uh, jack up the rear axle here right underneath the uh, differential So in the instructions, they tell you to put a jack stand underneath the frame rail here behind the axle. Um, that's going to be pretty hard because the frame kind of goes upward and you need a pretty, pretty tall jack stand or uh, setting it on some blocks of wood to reach the frame up there. So I'm going to go ahead and put some jack stands in front of the axle there on the frame and uh, we'll see if that works a little better because like I said, you need some pretty tall jack stands to get back behind here. So here on the driver's side, I'm gonna set my uh, jack stand right up under the frame rail right here, uh, cause this is gonna flex uh, once we drop the axle. About right there. Same thing on this side. So now I'll slowly lower it. Uh, the axle is gonna come down um, I'm just going to try to get on the jack stands a little bit there and uh, let's go ahead and get the tires off next. So if I start lowering this, you can see the axle is going to come down. But right before the tires hit the ground, go ahead and tighten my jack back up because now I know at least we're on the jack stands there and it's holding it somewhat. So let's go ahead and get the tires off next. Grab a 22 millimeter, go ahead and remove your uh, wheel and tire here and lug nuts. So next we're gonna need to uh, remove the coil spring here. And they say to just take a paint pen or a marker and just mark your coil spring here along with your coil spring mount on the axle here. So they want you to just take a paint pen and kind of mark this so you get it lined up correctly. Um, when we go to install it, so I'm just going to 
make a line right here bring that down about right there like that and of course same thing here on the passenger side So next we need to remove the uh, lower shock bolt here. So you have a 21 millimeter nut and a 21 millimeter uh, bolt there. So go ahead and take that off. And then go ahead and pull out your bolt here. Just let that kind of sit there like that. Of course, same thing on this side here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lower this uh, rear axle some more uh, and see if we get a big enough gap to get the uh, coil springs out of there. So just go ahead and lower this slowly. kind of hear it click there let's see if that's enough and that wasn't enough so keep going a little more here so right there you can see my jack is actually off the differential so that should be plenty so now you should be able to remove your coil spring what you can do is just kind of press down on the axle you can see it kind of bounce there so if you press down enough you can lift this up out of here go ahead and pull that out same thing on this side so what we need to do next is remove this uh, bump stop here um, the bump stop will pull out but you still got the uh, bump stop bracket we need to remove the whole bracket and as you can see it's welded on there so we're gonna have to use a sawzall and uh, cut that off and then we'll grind it smooth throw some paint on it and then we'll be ready to put on our bracket and as you're sawing this just be careful whichever way you go you got your fuel tank right here so you don't want to hit that and just be careful of like brake lines and all that stuff so let's go ahead and get that cut off Okay guys, so what I'm going to do next is we need to make that surface flat, um, but you can see we still got pieces of that uh, bump stop bracket on here, and you can see it's welded right here, and then it's kind of the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to take my uh, grinder with a cutoff wheel and try to cut these welds, and uh, then I'll take a grinding wheel and we'll get this all smooth out. Now uh, when you're doing this, just be careful, because as you can see, especially on the driver's side here. Uh, the fuel tank's right there, so watch where your sparks are flying when you do this. Uh, just use caution uh, while doing this. And uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get that nice and smooth, and then we'll throw a coat of paint on that uh, just so it doesn't rust. Hey guys, so uh, take your time getting that all ground down nice and flat, those welds and everything. And like I said before, um, use caution, especially on this driver's side, because your fuel tank is right there. You can see some of the sparks were flying that way, um, but just let off when they do start flying that way and try to turn your grinder the other way just so they're not shooting exactly at that fuel tank there. So again, just use uh, extreme caution on that. So once you get that all ground down, go ahead and take some uh, spray paint and let's go ahead and spray that because you don't want that to uh, rust. So just where you ground down, just do a light coat of uh, spray paint here. So it's kind of like that. And then uh, go ahead and let that dry. And while that's drying, I'll go ahead and do the uh, passenger side and then I'll come back. 
So as you can see, you got the passenger side all done as well. Uh, this side's a little bit easier because you don't have to really worry about the fuel tank and uh, where the sparks are flying. So next you're gonna locate these two brackets here. And then you got this half inch uh, nylon lock nut and then the six millimeter Allen head. So these are just gonna be for uh, pretty much lining up these brackets onto the frame there. That's pretty much all they do, but they want you to stick that through Put your nylon lock nut on and you're just going to tighten this a little bit uh, not all the way tight because you want it to be able to move on here so grab your allen wrench here along with your half inch wrench and let's just go ahead and like i said just kind of tighten this just not all the way I'm gonna say probably about like that. You can see, you can still uh, slide this back and forth when we need to. So let me get this one on. So then what you wanna do, go ahead and take this bracket here, and then this is gonna fit into this hole here. So flip this around. So get that into that hole there. And then what you're going to do is push this all the way towards the inside of the vehicle there. So this is flat against the frame on the outside. And then make sure it's flat on the bottom of the frame here. That's why we had to grind off those welds. So then what you can do, once you get that all the way flat against both sides, you can take your paint pen and you can go ahead and color in this hole here. And my paint pen's not working too well. So kind of like that. You can see there. And then you can take a center punch if you want. And you're gonna drill out this hole with a quarter inch bit. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my drill. And then while I'm holding my bracket up here, While I have my bracket up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill this hole out now. Just to make sure that that's lined up correctly. I think it's just gonna be easier this way. So go ahead and get your bracket all the way to the side and then flush against the bottom of the frame. Let's go ahead and drill this hole out and make sure you're centered there. So like that. Next, take this, uh, it's a half inch self-tapping bolt here. And you're gonna go ahead and just kinda get this started in here. So get that kinda started. And then with your half inch socket, go ahead and just start tightening this. And what you're doing is you're just pretty much tapping this drilled hole that we just drilled out. So just tighten that up enough to where the holes are started. Kind of like that. Go ahead and back this back out. So then grab your bracket along with that bolt that we just used. Get that into position. And go ahead and screw this back in there. And let's go ahead and tighten that up. Once you get that tight, go ahead and grab your torque wrench and they say to torque that to 15 foot-pounds. Just like that. And then you're gonna repeat this process on the uh, driver's side. Okay, so got this side all mounted as well. So now we can go ahead and drill out these two holes here. 
that's going to be the same your quarter inch drill bit and then we'll uh, put those self tappers into those as well so go ahead and drill these out and you may need to just pull on this plastic piece if your uh, drill's too big. We'll go ahead and get that centered and start drilling. Once you get that drilled out, let's go ahead and stick one screw in. So same thing, your self-tapper. And you can tell on these, I don't know if my camera's going to focus, but you got these little lines at the end your half inch go ahead and stick that one in there go ahead and drill out your other hole here and same thing get that one in place and then grab your torque wrench again and same thing you're going to torque those to 15 foot pounds with your half inch Go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, got the uh, passenger side all done as well. So now according to the instructions, we can go ahead and get our uh, coil springs back in. So grab your coil spring, go ahead and get this up in there. And then again, come down here, turn this to where we line up our uh, paint mark from earlier. It's about right there like that. And then of course, same thing on the driver's side here. And then if you notice, so on top of the coil spring here, you can see you got this indentation. So you wanna line that up. You can see how it's kinda right there and right there. But this one that I just pointed out is gonna go on this backside, it's kinda hard for you guys to see that. We wanna make sure that sits up into this indentation when we go to start jacking this. So let me get this kinda lined up. get my mark lined up there so like I said as we're jacking this I'm gonna go slowly and then just check each side because you can see I may have to pull this kind of back towards me as we're jacking just to get that uh, lined up perfectly so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and start jacking this up just a hair see my axle raise in there and it looks like it might line up perfectly because it'll go through the center there as well and line up but just want to double check. So make sure your marks lined up as well. So you can see I kind of had to pull it. Let me check the other side. Go up some more. So just keep double checking. So you can see, can't really turn this one anymore. So it means we're pretty much locked into that a uh, little nub that I was showing you earlier. So now let's go ahead and jack this up some more. Just like that. So then you can go ahead and get your shock bolt in. But as you can see, um, you can either pull up on the shock itself, or if you wanted to, you could uh, lower this down just a little bit. But luckily these shocks aren't too tight. So I'm just going to lift this up, get my bolt through, and then get your nut on the other side here. Same thing on this side. And then we'll go ahead and get this snug and then we'll torque it as well. So go ahead and get that snug with your 21 millimeter wrench and socket. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque that to 100 foot pounds.
All right, guys, so according to the instructions, they say we can go ahead and put our wheels and tires back on. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave them off. That way we have a little bit more room to work with in here and maybe I can get you some better camera angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine off and uh, we'll get the airbags assembled and uh, get them into the truck here. So next, grab your two airbags and then you got the uh, airlift logo here facing upward because you want these three holes exposed. You can see the other side only has two. And then you're gonna take two of these brackets here, the uh, 1197As. You're gonna set this on top, line up your three holes there. Same thing on this side. And then you're gonna take your uh, airline elbows here and you can see there's already a thread locker or thread tape on them. But go ahead and screw these into this uh, center hole here. Same thing on this side. Then you can grab a half inch wrench here. Go ahead and start tightening these down a little bit here. You don't have to get them completely tight. You can see there's still some thread showing there. Because they say to go finger tight, but you really can't get these even finger tight because they barely screw in. And then it says to do one and a half turns after that. So I'm just going to go in about, probably about like that. Next, you're going to grab this bracket here. And this is going to sit on top of here like that. And you may need to move this bottom one, but you want to line up these holes here. And then you're going to grab these 732nd uh, Allen head screws here. Get those started. Same thing on this one. And we'll go ahead and get those snug and then we'll torque them. Grab your torque wrench and you're going to torque those to 20 foot pounds. If you can without it turning here. So next go ahead and flip these over. And then you can kind of see, you've got kind of the same thing, except you don't have three holes. You got two holes here, and then you can kind of see where that sticker indention is. Um, go ahead and take these two brackets, just like the other side. Go ahead and stick these on, line up your holes. It's kind of like that. And then you're gonna take uh, these brackets here. So this one here is gonna be different than the other one, you can see the two lines right up here. Uh, this side is going to be for your drivers. And what you want to do is get these holes kind of lined up here. Get this bracket on top like that. And then go ahead and drop uh, these screws in here. You can kind of get it. This one started here. Same with the other one, you got to kind of drop it down in here and hopefully it lands correctly and of course mine didn't. So now you got to kind of fish it out of here. Use my fingers, there we go. So try and get that lined up correctly on the holes there. Grab your seven thirty seconds here. Try to get that kind of started. Same with this one. And we'll torque these after I get both of them on here. So same thing on this one. And you might be able to drop this in first. So it's 
kind of sitting on there like that. Might help a little bit. Same with this one here. And then just kind of hold this down. Get that kind of lined up. Make sure you get both of them started. And kind of the same thing, go ahead and torque those to uh, 20 foot pounds. And if you don't get 20 out of it, it's fine. It says no more than 20, so you can get it close. That's fine too. Okay, so we'll start out with the driver's side one, which is gonna be the one with the two notches right here. So they say to take a carriage bolt and just go ahead and slide this in. It'll kind of lock itself, because you can see that right there. So just kind of set it on there like that. Let's go ahead and stick it in the truck now. So it says in order for this to fit correctly, we're going to need to lower this a little more. So let me go ahead and lower it, the jack. Because we want it to give us enough clearance to get our airbag in there. So grab your airbag. And then if you notice these two hooks right here, those are going to go underneath here. And then your bolt is going to go through that far hole right there. So try and get this kind of positioned to where those hooks are in place and then your bolt's going to go through that hole. So you may need to come just on this other side and maneuver that bolt to where it gets through that hole. like about right there and then if you notice our carriage bolt is through so it says to just go ahead and stick this on here you may have to hold it kind of just to get it started and they say don't tighten it all the way yet just get it on there and then you're gonna grab another carriage bolt it's probably gonna be hard for you guys to see this but we need to go, so this is where those two holes were. So this first hole, there's gonna be an, another hole going through um, the axle portion here. So you wanna stick this carriage bolt through the first one and drop it down into that hole there like that. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And then if you guys will notice through the control arm bracket here, you can see our carriage bolt. So grab a 916 socket with an extension and we need to try to get this started on there. So you may need to move this bolt around a little bit or go at an angle just to get it kind of started here. Stick that through. And like I said, just kind of get it hopefully started on here. Kind of a pain to do. Once you get it kind of started there, don't fully tighten this one either yet. So just kind of like that. Let's do the uh, passenger side now. So the passenger side is going to be set up kind of the same thing. Um, get your airbag here. Get this fed up in here. Get these two locking tabs underneath this bracket here again. And then you're going to grab two carriage bolts and you're going to go off uh, this hole right here. So it's going to be kind of hard to you kind of just slide this one in there if you can. Just like that. And then you're going to have the same thing on the uh, back side here. Try 
and get that one in like that. And then come down below here so you can see there's that one here. Get your nut on there. And this is going to be the same thing. You can kind of see it there through the uh, control arm bracket there. So I'm going to get this kind of set up the same way. Try and hold that. This one's actually maybe a little bit easier than the driver's side one. Try to get that one started on there. Kind of like that we'll go ahead and get these uh snug now and then we'll go ahead and torque them as well so to get these snugged up you will need to use a deep well yeah it's gonna be hard getting a deep well in here though Let me try a quarter inch 916 steep wells. It's a little bit smaller. Get that tight and then if you want to torque these you can they say to go 31 foot pounds um actually let me just grab my torque wrench just to make sure so go ahead and torque that and i thought i said 31 it's, it's actually 30 foot pounds have to drop your socket down in here to get that to work right but you can fish it out of there same thing I'll go ahead and do the other side Now we need to get our uh, upper bracket attached to the airbag. So what you want to do is grab four of your carriage bolts here and you're gonna just go ahead and stick these up in here and then you want to slide these kind of over to where they catch like that just to make install easier. Same with this back side. Kind of like that. side here and you want to go ahead and do the same to the other side so kind of like that get those into position now we can go ahead and slowly jack this up so go ahead and just slowly jack this up because we want to raise this so we can get our uh, nuts on so I'm gonna like I said slowly jack it up and then if I need to move these bolts I can the carriage bolts So you can see, if you need to move these a little bit over, you can, because you want those to come up. And it looks like this side's, I'm gonna have to almost move those out. So it looks like this side, I'll be all right if I just take these ones out of here. 
So I just checked the other side and it's the same way. So you guys will be safe if you just put in the front side ones on each side and then you can do these back ones after we get these ones lined up and tightened a little bit. So just go up. So I didn't go all the way up, still left a little room there. Let me reposition my camera here. So now you can see, go ahead and take your nuts, get these started on these ones here. I'm not gonna fully tighten these ones until I get the other side on here. And then you may need to just turn this bolt because you can see it's still not completely in there. these ones snug um, your torque is going to be the same 30 foot pounds but I'm just going to guesstimate on these because it's going to be very hard to get a uh, torque wrench and socket in here so go ahead and get this side snug I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench probably be the easiest Okay, let's move on to the passenger side. So as you can see, pretty much the same thing. Um, got these ones poked through when we jacked it up. So now we can go ahead and get these back sides on. And again, you may have to move the airbag a little bit there. And that one there is kind of hard to get up into. So if you got a stubby wrench, it might be a little bit easier. Okay, like that. So now we can go ahead and start installing our air lines and our Schrader valve. So I'm gonna start with the Schrader valve. Um, now, since I am doing the onboard air compressor, I'll be teeing off the lines into one line. Um, if you guys aren't using the air compressor and you want to do separate lines, you can do that because it doesn't include the T. Um, normally, you can go through the license plate holes here. You can drill those out and get your Schrader valves through those and then just run the lines to each uh, airbag. But since I'll be teeing it off into one, I'm just going to drill one hole. And instead of the license plate holes, I'm just going to go right through here because this is just plastic. And if you guys didn't want to go through there, you could go through like right here at the top and then the same thing over here, that's just plastic as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drill out probably about right here. So the Schrader valve will come out here and that's gonna be a 5 16 drill bit. So I'm thinking Probably about right in here is going to be the best bet. So go ahead and drill that out with your 5 16ths. 
Doesn't really take much at all. So next you'll take your air line and uh, you can see they got the straighter valves on each end. So what you'd want to do if you're running separate ones is you'd uh, take each end and then pull it, pull them together and then you just cut them in half, measure about what your half would be and then just go ahead and cut your air line and run your straighter valves. Um, and the reason I'm doing just a Schrader valve, even though I'll have an onboard air compressor, is because if any time that air compressor fails and I need to air these up or let air out, um, I can still do it from a Schrader valve. So that's the reason I'm putting one in. So what you wanna do is take your Schrader valve. I'm not gonna cut my air line until I get to the airbag. So, Stick your Schrader valve through, and then you got the star washer. You're gonna put that on first. Go ahead and stick this through. And then you're gonna take a uh, your rubber washer. Stick that one through. Then your flat washer. And then your nut. Go ahead and that screwed on there go ahead and get that snug and we'll go ahead and run this uh, along the side here to the passenger side airbag so since I will be using a compressor, and like I said, I'll be teeing it off. I'm gonna go ahead and put this tee in now. Um, this is out of my compressor kit. Like I said, if you're not using the compressor, you'll just take this line, run it straight to your airline there on the passenger side. Um, so let me go ahead and just cut this and we'll get our tee into place. I'm thinking probably right around here. And you wanna use nice cutters if you're doing this or an ex um, just a new razor blade because you want a straight cut. If not, you may have leaks. So let me go ahead and get this cut. So like I said, I'm gonna go probably right about here. And then I'll go ahead and add my T. What you do is you just push this on and it kind of clicks on there and then just give it a pull, make sure it ain't gonna come off of there. So now this line will go to our uh, pass our driver's side airbag and then this one here will go straight off and we'll go to the passenger. So let me stick this end I just cut into the T there. Again, pull on it, make sure it ain't gonna go anywhere. So now I'll go ahead and run this line along the frame rail. All right guys, so I'll just show you what I did here. I didn't record that whole thing because I didn't want to bore you with it, but so there's our T. So I came off the T and you can see it kind of wraps around there. And then I went up through the uh, bumper bracket there. So it's coming up, coming along here. I zip tied it to uh, this wiring harness here. And then you can see there's also zip tie up there uh, through that hole and then I followed it along here and then right here I went ahead and uh, put the exhaust shield on the airline there seems how the tailpipe and muffler is kind of pretty close to it so that'll help protect the airline there and then I zip tied it to the frame there and not sure how well you guys will see this but so you can see there's the heat shield right there so then it comes along, goes right above the uh, sway bar link uh, bracket there, and I zip tied it to that sway bar link bracket. And then it comes up, and let me move my camera. And then coming off of the sway bar link bracket right here, comes up through this hole, and then it's gonna go down to our airbag there. I don't really like how it's close to the coil spring here, but this is really the only way you can do it. Um, they don't show you in the instructions where to route the lines on this. Um, I prefer to do it this side because if you go on the inside there, the whole exhaust is pretty much in the way. 
So your airline's gonna be super close to your exhaust. So I think this is gonna be the best bet. We'll zip tie it, get it nice and tight to where this line's not gonna move and uh, come in contact with the coil spring or anything. So then just measure about how much you would need and we'll go ahead and cut this. Um, don't wanna to have too much slack, but then you don't want it to be too tight either. So just kind of measure where you think you would need it. So I'm thinking probably about right there. So if I go ahead and cut it right here, again, get a nice straight cut on this. And then we'll go ahead and stick this into that line coming off the airbag there. And you can turn this air line come, or the elbow coming out if you need to. So go ahead and get that pushed in. Once you get it pushed in, again, pull on it. Make sure it ain't going to pop out of there. And as you can see, we're hitting the coil spring here. So what I'll do is I'll swing this around. And then I'll see if I can get a zip tie in between the bracket here and the line and we'll see if we can hold that maybe against the frame just a little tighter so what i ended up doing was just running uh so you still got that hole in the bracket right there so i was able to run a zip tie down through that and then uh around the airline there so now you can see we got plenty of clearance from the uh, coil spring and then it's actually not pulled too tight either so we should be good like that so while we're on this side, uh, let's go ahead and get the exhaust shield put in place. So the way this is gonna go is you're gonna take your heat shield here. It's gonna sit on there kinda, kinda like that, just to reflecting the heat from the uh, airbag. So maybe something like that. Um, so go ahead and take the two hose clamps I give you and unscrew those with your eight millimeter. And then just kinda wrap them around here Put it to where your screw is facing that way. So get those uh, started again with your eight millimeter. That one might didn't go on there correctly. Try and get that straight that somewhat started just move that one down here and then grab your other one same thing just get it up around the exhaust and started that grab your shield and you're gonna go through the center portion here so you're gonna take that kind of like that and actually let me just get this up here like that so we have room to screw it take your other end here get that portion wrapped around the center to where it's kind of like that and then you can move your hose clamps up here go ahead and get one side tightened and get this where you need it to be so I'm going to say probably about right there like that so go ahead and tighten this up Kind of like that. Same thing on this side. And then just get that uh, tightened all the way. And you can see that'll block some of this heat from the exhaust uh, hitting the airbag there.
Okay, so now I'm gonna tap into the other side of that T with my airline. Again, if you're, uh, if you're not using the air compressor, you won't have this T and you'll just go off of your uh, other Schrader valve uh, for the driver's side airbag. So let me go ahead and get this inserted in here. Get that pushed in, pull on it. And we'll go ahead and route this along the passenger side or uh, driver's side frame rail. So I did kind of the same thing, just ran the uh, airline back behind the bumper here in the bracket up and over, zip tied it to this wiring harness here. And then you can see I got another zip tie here. We'll go up above the uh, stabilizer link bracket there, and then we'll come out to the airbag again. But since I'm running the air compressor, I need to tee off somewhere along here so we can run a line to the uh, compressor when I get that installed. So I'm thinking probably right around here Somewhere in here is probably going to be the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and we'll get our T in and we'll feed it to the bag there. And then the other end will go to our compressor. So I'm going to go, like I said, probably about um, right in here, I think is going to be good. So go ahead and cut that straight. Grab your T, get that pushed on, give it a pull, grab your other end here, and stick that on, give that a pull, and we'll go ahead and get this into our airbag, and then like I said, I'll, I'll connect the uh, next airline after we get this done, going to the uh, air compressor. All right guys, so I got that all ran. You can see coming through that hole there, back down and then into the airbag. And then I went ahead and put another uh, zip tie there to hold that and keep that away from the uh, coil spring. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'll go ahead and grab my uh, bundle of airline that they supplied with on the uh, air compressor. I'll go ahead and get that airline stuck in here and then we'll feed it along the driver's side here, along the frame to where we're gonna mount the compressor. And then we can go ahead and get the uh, wheels and tires, all that back on and uh, lower it and get the lug nuts torqued. So according to the compressor instructions here, looks like we can mount the compressor anywhere outside the frame rail in this yellow box here, um, anywhere in front of the rear tires and then behind the front here. Um, so I think I'm going to go on the driver's side here, uh, just because the battery is uh, mounted on the driver's side and not the passenger side. So all of our cable, we can run straight to the battery and our ignition source. Um, so I think that's going to be the best bet is mounting it somewhere right in here. So let me take a look real quick. So I think right here is probably going to be the best bet. Um, so you got your interior, uh, toolbox here. Uh, that you can access from the interior. And I think if we mount the uh, compressor and manifold right in here, I think that's gonna be probably the best bet because this is kind of an open frame area and it'll be kind of protected from uh, that drop down there. And yeah, I think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna run the uh, air line from that T and I'll run it along the frame rail to about right here. So grab your bundle of uh, airline that they give you with the compressor set and i'm going to go ahead and stick this into the t here get that pushed in pull on it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and route this along top of the frame rail probably above the coil spring there and uh i'll come back because i need to let my camera charge really quick all right guys so i got that line all uh, routed so you can see, I just kind of went off of this hole up here because um, this was kind of at a really sharp turn. So I didn't want to kink it or anything. So I just kind of ran it up and then just ran it up along here. You can see I zip tied it to the uh, bed there. 
and then it's going up atop of the uh, coil spring bracket. And then from the uh, coil spring bracket, it goes in between uh, this point right here to where it goes on top of the frame. And then it runs along top of the frame there. And then it comes out over the uh, fuel lines, the fuel neck and all that. And then comes back behind this part of the frame. And I just went ahead and zip tied it to uh, the existing wiring harnesses here. And then it comes out on the uh, top of this or backside of this right here to where we're gonna mount our manifold and uh, compressor. So since we're pretty much done with the rear end here, before I get started on the compressor, all that, let's just go ahead and get our uh, wheels and tires back on really quick. Go ahead and jack it up enough to get your jack stands out of there. Then go ahead and grab your torque wrench and torque your lug nuts to 140 foot pounds. And you can see my socket gets stuck on there. That's why I hate these lug nuts. What happens is they start to swell and a 22 millimeter is too small. So you need a 22 and a half. All right guys, so for those of you that are not running the uh, air compressor, um, that's pretty much gonna be it for the install. Uh, for those of you that are installing the compressor, we'll go ahead and move on here in a second. But um, what you wanna do, for those of you guys that aren't running a compressor, is just go ahead and come over to your Schrader valve or both of your Schrader valves, and you wanna go ahead and fill up both of your airbags. The maximum is 100 PSI, but I would just do, say like 50 PSI, and then uh, take some soapy water and go ahead and spray around like the Schrader valve here, all your connectors on the uh, airbag and that, just to make sure you're not leaking any air. If you see any bubbles, then you're leaking some air. So just check those air lines. And then um, you can go ahead and keep your pressure in, or if you want to take it out, they say the minimum that you want to keep in these airbags is uh, 5 PSI. So just keep that in mind, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the air compressor. All right guys, so my camera's almost dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night and then uh, we'll continue mounting the compressor in the morning. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the compressor and manifold here on the driver's side, right above the uh, parking brake cable. You can see here's the interior toolbox. Um, and I think the best route is I'm gonna put the compressor probably right here like this. And then I'll have the manifold going uh, right here like this. So they say that these can't be more than uh, 32 inches apart. So we're we're good right here. Um, so I think this is probably going to be the best bet. Just because if I mount the compressor here, I'm afraid that when we pull this parking brake cable tight, this will lift up a little bit and it'll start hitting on this uh, compressor. So I think with the manifold there, when this is tight, it's not gonna hit on the uh, manifold here. So I think that's gonna be the best bet. Um, and then for your manifold here, so the one coming from the airbags, they show on the instructions, it's supposed to come down to this hole here. So I'm gonna have to loop the airline going down into here. And then your other airline is right here. That's gonna go from the uh, compressor so that'll come down going into that one and then we got our electrical connector and all that so let's go ahead and uh, get these mounted um, I'll probably start with this manifold here I'll get the holes drilled out and then we'll get this mounted and then do the compressor so go ahead and get your manifold up here probably gonna go a little higher just because our airline is gonna be right here and I don't want that down below the frame really um, so I'm thinking somewhere kind of like that and just watch your hole, make sure you're not gonna be bolting right through your hole there. So I'm thinking kind of like that. I'll get one hole started. Um, I'm gonna be using a 3.30 seconds drill bit. They call for a 5.30 seconds. I just wanna start out small just to make sure I get it correct. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking 
somewhere along the lines right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just, they give you a template you can use. I'm just going to use the whole manifold itself. So I'm thinking somewhere like that. Let me go ahead and get this one drilled out. So now we know where our hole is going to be. Let me get this drilled out the rest of the way. So now I'll go ahead and swap my 330 seconds with my 530 seconds bit. Get my bit tight here. It's kind of like that. So then take a 530 seconds Allen screw that they give you I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this one kind of put in there so we can get the other holes drilled out okay so kind of like that and I'm just gonna grab my level just to make sure I get this kind of level that now I'll go ahead and drill out the rest of these two holes here okay so there we got our manifold all mounted so now let's do the uh, compressor so next grab your compressor electrical connector is going to be on top and I think I'm going to go right about probably about right here or so I think that's going to work out perfectly and then there's plenty of room if this starts bouncing it's not going to hit because it's hitting on that um, little toolbox from the interior first so I'm thinking kind of like there like that and I'm going to do kind of the same thing uh, just use this as a template and we'll get a couple holes drilled out or one hole drilled out we'll fasten it on here and then we'll do the others so i'm going to use that same 330 seconds bit to start out small it makes it a lot easier so i'm thinking kind of i think right there is going to work just fine and get those drilled out and you can see it kind of moved on me but that's okay drop down just a little bit and then they don't say what bit size to use for these ones um, I'm just gonna use a 730 seconds see if that's gonna be big enough And let's see if we can just get this kind of started. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter on these. Let's see if we can get the threads in there somewhat. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do, um, it's gonna be hard to get a drill bit in here because of this toolbox. Um, I think I'll get this one tightened, we'll get it level. And then I'll mark these out with my paint pen, get all four of them drilled out, and then we'll go ahead and get it on there. And then also just pay attention. So there is this hole right here as well. So when you're drilling this one, just make sure this back one's not gonna be uh, hitting that because that hole's bigger and your uh, screw won't fit through there. So let me get this put back on here. out a little bit even though I know this isn't really perfectly level so you may just need to eyeball it about right 
there like that. Let's go ahead and mark these out. Paint pen's kind of drying out, so let me try this one. Then I'll go ahead and pull this off. You can see your holes there, so let's go ahead and I'm going to center punch them, we'll get those drilled out, and then uh, should be good. So you can see we're pretty close to that hole, but there'll be plenty of room to where we're not going to hit that. The center punch right in the center. Hey guys, I'm just going to use my 530 seconds on that hole because this one's kind of big and that screw is kind of going there a little loose so i'm just going to do a 5 30 seconds so next guys i'm just going to take my grinder and i'm going to grind this hole here just to get some of the paint off the frame because we're going to hook a ground wire to this when we screw the uh, compressor down so just scuff it up a little bit just something like that so now we can go ahead and get this compressor mounted get all your screws in there might just need to use a soccer wrench that might be the easiest and then guys I already forgot to put that ground on there so go ahead and undo these and then you're gonna bring this around and this is gonna go underneath against the frame rail there so let's see if i can pull this off here it's so like i said if you can get it back behind here kind of like that Go ahead and get your screw back through here tuck this up out of the way here just want to make sure that has a nice ground so next you're going to take the long wiring harness that they give you in the kit and if you notice there's a short wire here so this one here and you can even see on there it says i don't know if it's going to focus or not but it says on there uh compressor pwr so compressor power and that's what this red wire all coming off the compressor is going to connect to so what you can do is i uh, take this cut this terminal off i don't know why they put this on there but it says to cut this off so go ahead and cut this off and strip back that wire and just kind of twist it here and you're gonna plug in this power wire here into your manifold and I 
think it might go this way. So yeah, it goes on that way. And then you see this red locking tab. So once you get that on there, you're gonna push this, it'd be downward. So go ahead and get this plugged in as much as it'll go. And then press down on this red locking tab on the backside. You can hear it kind of click there and just make sure that's on there solid. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip this wire back and we'll uh, use a buck connector that they supply you with here. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this wire down since we're so close here, we don't need all this excess. You can see they got this tape, so I'm just gonna peel this tape off and uh, we'll go ahead and cut this wire down here and then we can uh, retape everything. So you can cut this tape, just be careful not to cut your wires or yourself. And I'm gonna leave a little slack, so I'm gonna say, cause this is gonna connect here. So I'm gonna cut off maybe about that much right there. Again, go ahead and strip this one. That one just doesn't want to come off. There we go. Twist that one up. So now we can go ahead and get our butt connector. Stick this in on one end. cut that down a little bit stick this end in there and go ahead and crimp that down Then just give it a good pull. Make sure it ain't going to come out of there. Grab your other end here. And I'm not sure why they give you such a big butt connector. So what I'm going to do is pull some more of this off. And we'll double up on it. So kind of like that. And then just bring this over so it kind of doubles it up makes it a little thicker because this wire is a lot thinner than this one here so kind of like that go ahead and stick that in there and crimp that one down make sure you're all the way in there before you crimp like that give it a good pull and then what I'm gonna do is uh you can take a lighter or a heat gun here I'm gonna heat up this uh, buck connector because it's a heat shrink so it'll shrink around the uh, wire here make it uh, weatherproof so kind of like that just don't overdo it to where you burn it. But you can see it shrinks around the wires there. And then just for double protection here, I'm gonna go ahead and take some electrical tape. Just wrap that around this buck connector just to make sure that's gonna seal good. And then we can uh, go ahead and re-tape uh, these wires back up. Just do one layer like that. Electrical tape. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of tape this up 
because this is going to go up and then we'll feed it to the uh, engine compartment. So I think we just kind of take this and bring this down here like this. And we'll go ahead and run some tape along there. So I think just kind of like that. Next, I'll go ahead and just kind of feed this up over the compressor. And then we'll go ahead and start feeding this here in a little bit. Let's get our uh, air lines connected first. So grab your air line coming from your airbags. And like I said, um, in the instructions, they show it going into this bottom one here. And then the compressor one's going into the side there. I don't think it really matters because I flipped over the manifold. It looks like they go to the same spot. Um, but I'm just going to follow along on the instructions just to make sure. So take this. And I think I'll go behind the wires, but I'm going to have to cut it first. So like I said, what I'm going to do is kind of do something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this. I'll leave a little slack in case we need to do any more adjustments. So, I think it's somewhere right along here for now. So again, grab your cutters. And get a nice straight cut on this. And then what I'll do, like I said, I'll go behind here. And then we can kind of bring this up. So um because you don't want it to be kinked right in here so i think what i'm gonna do let me just cut off a little more because that's kind of long so i think that's going to be enough so go ahead and stick this in there push on that hard get it latched in there give it a pull so yeah I think that's gonna work like that and then what I can do is I can zip tie it to this wiring harness just to keep it from uh, moving around too much and then also to keep it to where it's not kinking right here so I think yeah if I do that and then zip tie it we should be golden so next you're going to take a piece of your airline here we're going to push it onto the air compressor here and then we'll go down to there so go ahead and get this pushed onto the compressor and this can be kind of hard to get on just got to keep forcing it on there kind of like that like I said it's pretty hard to get on there just gotta push it all the way against that and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut this to where it fits down into this uh, spot right there so measure out about how much you need but you'd also don't want it to be kinked as well I'm thinking probably because you want it to be able to push in. So I'm going to say right about there. Take your cutters. Cut that off. And stick that in there. So kind of like that. Give it a pull. I think we're good right there like that. And then grab a couple zip ties. Like I said, I'm just gonna zip tie this air line to the wiring harness there to keep it from, uh, if it were to kink or something. So I think if we just do it just kind of like that, that's gonna work.
just the one will be fine. So just like that. So next I'm gonna go ahead and uh, route this, all this wire up uh, underneath into the hood there. So I'm just gonna go along the frame rail here, following all these other electrical uh, wiring harnesses. And then we'll come up and I'll uh, show you where I come up on the uh, engine compartment there. So let me go ahead and do that really quick and then I'll come back. All right guys, so I got it all routed here. I'll show you the path I took. So like I said, I went uh, on top of the frame there, you can see it, and it comes out back in here. And take a look there, you can see it running up along there. And then I went ahead and zip tied it to this uh, wiring harness here. And then just kept following along on that wiring harness. You can see I zip tied it there, zip tied it there. I still need to cut that one. And then it kind of goes uh, up towards the wheel well there. And then if you take a look there, you can see it comes up and I just kept zip tying it to that large wiring harness there. Just make sure that it's down below or zip tied really tight so it doesn't get caught in your uh, steering shaft there. So you can see I went underneath uh, looks like a, not sure if that's a vacuum line there, I can't tell, but came out along the frame rail down there and then up through here. And then I just kept following along that large wiring harness, zip tying it, coming up, and then it's coming up right here to our battery. And then also uh, to help feed that a little better, what I did was I just uh, took some electrical tape you can see I just taped up these two ends because this isn't uh, taped up or anything. So these three wires are just loose and they get caught on everything. So if you guys just uh, put some electrical tape around this to help feed this through all that stuff, uh, it should be good. So now let's go ahead and start hooking some stuff up. All right, guys. So now we can start to uh, hook some of this stuff up. Um, I did go ahead and just cut some of the tape that they had on here, kind of like that, just to... Uh, Loosen these up some. So the red wire, of course, is gonna to go to your positive battery. Black wire is gonna be your ground, so it'll go straight to your negative cable there. And then the uh, pink one there, we're gonna to have to uh, put it into a fuse that comes on with the ignition. So let's go ahead and get our battery connectors first, and then we'll do our fuse one last. So I'll start out with the negative or the ground. So just get some slack on this. And I'll end up cutting that because we're going to put an eyelet to put it onto the cable there. So, like I said, just pull out some of this slack here. I'm not going to make it super tight. If we have some slack, we'll just tape it up. It's better to have more than less. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of snip that there. And go ahead and strip that back. And they give you this... Uh, eyelet here um, and it's pretty large as well so I think I might double up on this one just so it's a nice tight fit into that eyelet so I'm going to strip back a little more than usual and my strippers are kind of wearing out here So twist that up and I'm going to fold it over. So it's kind of like that. And then take your eyelet go ahead and stick that through there. Grab your crimpers and let's go ahead and crimp that. Make sure your wire's in there. And then just go ahead and give it a nice tug. Make sure that ain't gonna come off of there. Now let me grab a socket and we'll remove that cable. So that's gonna be a 13 millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull that off. Stick this right on top of there. 
Like I said, we're gonna have quite a bit of slack, but that's okay. We'll zip tie it up. Never know when you're gonna need to move something. Let's go ahead and hook that up there. And tighten that down. See this cable is actually pretty loose, so I'm gonna actually tighten that. Up. So next we'll do the same with our red wire here, and I think what I'll do is I'll just put the same amount of slack. So just kind of measure this out. About right there. Go ahead and cut that. And strip that off. This one's a little bit thicker, so we won't need to double up on this one. Twist that, grab my eyelet, get that stuck through there, go ahead and crimp that one. Tug. Same thing, go ahead and pull off this one. And get your eyelet onto there. And I think I'll route this one. I think I'll go underneath here. So next we need to put in this uh, inline fuse on our red power wire here going to the positive. So, and then I totally messed up guys. I meant to um, put that eyelet on end of uh, one of these and then, uh, then we can join it together to this because uh, they only give you one more buck connector. Um, but since I already used that eyelet, I do have an extra buck connector just laying around. So if you guys are doing this, uh, cut this first, put the eyelet on that, and then you can attach it to your battery, and then you can splice this into the other one here. So, no big deal. At least I got another buck connector laying around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut into this. And I'll just go ahead and cut enough of this off. I think it's probably about right there. Grab your strippers. Go ahead and strip this off here. Get one of your buck connectors. Twist that. Stick that through there. Go ahead and crimp that. Go ahead and pull on that. And go ahead and strip this side here. Stick that in on this side. Crimp that one down. Nice. 
pull on that. Go ahead and strip the other side here. And then your other wire here. So just like that. And then you'll take that 15 amp fuse they supply you with. You can stick that in here. that in there. Go ahead and close that up. Then take your uh, heat gun or your lighter. I'll show you with the lighter since I used the heat gun earlier. You can just take a lighter here and just heat up along here. See that actually takes a little longer than the heat gun. It's also pretty cold out right now. Then again, guys, just for a little more protection, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some electrical tape along these buck connectors. Next, we need to do our ignition wire here. Just take your pink one. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some of the slack off already. And I'm gonna run that back underneath here. Cause we're gonna run that to this fuse box here. So if you can get it kinda under here like that. ahead and open this up so go ahead and open up your fuse panel here and this is just going to want to stay closed on you so I'm going to take some of this excess wire and just kind of twist it around here see if I can hold that up for us and then if you take a look in the instructions so we need to find a uh, 10 amp fuse which comes on with the ignition and if you look right here it says hardware to connect the ignition is not included so um, what I'm going to be using is it's an add a circuit fuse add a circuit and I have one of these just kind of laying around so you just add a fuse into there and then we'll crimp this side um, I'll put a link in the description for one of these. Like I said, I don't know why they don't include that. That's kind of stupid that they don't. Um, so we need to find one that comes on with the ignition. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my test light here. This end is gonna go on the negative battery terminal. And I'm gonna check some of these fuses to see which ones are constantly on and which ones will come on with the ignition. So you can see, I'm just putting it on the end there where the metal's kind of showing on these fuses and my light's not coming on. So all of these 10 amp ones, oh, that one there is hot. So that one's constantly has power to it. But these ones here probably have only power when the ignition's on. So you just want to check some of these. Uh, same with over here. See that one's constant. So we want to find the one of these that comes on with the ignition that is the least important. So say like cigarette lighter or um, a dome light or something like that. You want to tap into one of those. You don't want to tap into say like the PCM or TCM, one of those, because um, those are pretty important. So what I'm going to do now is let me go ahead and just turn the ignition to see if these all come on so 
So I got the ignition on. And let's just test some of these. So now you can see these ones come on with the ignition. So let me uh, check. I need to decode this um, cover here because it shows the numbers for the fuses and then the description. So let me go and find the least important uh, 10 amp fuse and we'll tap into that one. So what I found, um, the least important is gonna be this, uh, this one right here, this middle one. So they say this is for the sunroof, which this one doesn't have, or the uh, light rain sensor. So, um, which I don't even know if this truck has or not. This ain't my truck, but um, that one does come on with the ignition. So I think that's probably gonna be the least important one. So you can take this fuse puller here, go ahead and pull out this 10 amp fuse. And then you'll stick that into your ADA circuit fuse. So once you get your fuses into your ADA circuit, i put this back. Um, the ADA circuit will come with uh, several different fuses. So just put another 10 amp in there. So you got both of your 10 amps. And then go ahead and take your wire here. And we'll cut some of this slack off of here. Let me get my test light out of here first. So just measure this to about how much you would need. Again, I'm gonna leave a little slack just in case we need to change something in the future because we can always bundle it up. So I'm gonna say right about there, cut that off. Grab your strippers. that back and let's go ahead and crimp that to our add a circuit fuse butt connector here stick that in there go ahead and crimp that that a pull get these wires out of here and then go ahead and plug that into your fuse there so like that and then you're gonna route this I'm just gonna kind of take it maybe route it right about here and let's just see if we can get this lid to somewhat close Let's see it doesn't really want to close there so let me see if we can get it to go back over here might be a little bit easier so just kind of something like that and then it comes out that's gonna work good and then we'll go ahead and clean this area up and zip tie it make that look a little better there okay guys so let me show you something real quick here so um, I had this sitting right there but you can see it kind of pinches that wire when it closes so what I ended up doing was just took my dikes and just cut out a little chunk of this plastic right here and you can see now the wire sits in there perfectly like that and won't get pinched so go ahead and do that. And then you can see this lid closes all the way. All right guys, so as you can see, you got that all kind of cleaned up a little better there and then just zip tied it. So now we have a uh, easy access to the fuse and it looks a little better here. So next go ahead and grab your remote that comes with it and go ahead and pull this tab for your battery. And now we should be ready to try it out. So with that battery pulled, um, they're saying that it'll go into pairing mode now. So um, let's go ahead and click this. 
see what this does here. So devices, and I think this is what the manifold number is. So hit that, and you can see it's trying to pair. Not sure if you guys can read that or not. And you can see right there, it said uh, pairing successful. And I'm not sure why that says 20 right now. Um, let's see what happens if we crank this up. Okay, so now you can hear the compressor kicked on. Kind of hard to see it down there, but. Compressor did kick on. So I'll let that cut off when it's at 25, I guess. Okay, so that's saying it's at uh, 25 now. So let me just see what it does if I uh, take this down some. Let's just go to 15. You can hear it. Letting the air out, so now we're sitting at 15. So it looks like this is working. So what you'd wanna do next is they say, um, you wanna check for leaks. Uh, so you would inflate it to uh, 30 PSI. So let me just go ahead and crank this up to 30. It shuts off after a few minutes. You can see we're still at 15. So if I crank this up to 30, Compressor should kick on here. So there it goes. I'll let that get up to 30. Um, I'll spray some of my connections, but you guys kind of get the point. Just take some uh, water and dish soap and you're gonna spray down and just look for any bubbles. Um, pretty much another thing you can do if you don't wanna check for leaks uh, with this system, you can see it's sitting at 30 now. So I'm just gonna give this like five minutes and then I'll come back and see where this is sitting at. If this has dropped at all, then we know there's a leak somewhere, but if not, we're good. So um, the other thing you can do on this is you can set this up through the wireless app. Of course, this isn't my truck, so I'm not gonna go through all that. I'll let the uh, customer of this truck set all that up. You can see you can use uh, Apple iOS or Android is supported. Um, and you can control it from there. And I need to read really quick and we'll see how to set the uh, presets. So, like I said, let me let this sit for a little bit here. Uh, let's see if it's dropped any at all, just from sitting here. You can see we're still at 30, so we're, we're probably good. So, um, and then you can see this is the uh, Bluetooth signal for your manifold, I guess. So let me read up on how to preset these and then uh, we'll go ahead and close out the video. Okay, so it's been about a 10 minutes or so. Um, I did read up on how to set the presets, but let's just see where we're sitting at now. We were at 30, let's see if it's dropped any. You can see we're still at 30. So I'm gonna call that good on the leak free. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to, you can spray down um, if yours isn't holding. So, uh, so for the presets, they say, uh, what you do, so you got preset one, preset two, and then there's a third preset. If you hold both of those together, that'll be your third preset. I'm not gonna set that one, because like I said, this ain't my truck, but let's just experiment with this and see what it does. So it says a press and hold, whichever one you want. So let's just hold, press and hold this first one. Oh, okay, so preset saved to 30, okay. Um, so now I think we just, you pick your, so let's go down to five, because five is the minimum you want to keep in this. So let me take this down to five. We'll let it deflate here. You can hear it deflating. Okay. And then what you do, I guess, is you'll press and hold and that'll keep it at five. So we'll, we'll make that preset number two. Press and hold. And you can see preset two saved is what it does. 
So now if I click this first one, preset one applied. So you can hear the compressor running. Let that get up to 30. And you can actually feel the truck kind of moving, lifting up that rear end just from being on the front here. Okay, so now it's set at 30. Uh, so say you're pulling a camper and you want to keep it at 30 like that. And then you unhook your camper. So now you want to uh, go ahead and take it down to five since you're not going to be towing. So you can press that preset two. And now it should let the air out. There it goes. Just takes uh, takes a little bit just to uh, probably because of the Bluetooth setting. So, and then if you wanted to do the preset for number three, you would pick uh, whatever pressure you want, and then you'd hold both of these two at the same time, and that'll say preset three applied. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for the video. Again, this was a 2015 Ram 1500. Went ahead and installed some airlift airbags, the Ultimate 5000s, along with the airlift wireless one compressor. Um, not too bad of a job to do. It takes a little bit of time, but uh, that's why I do these videos to help you guys out. And like I said earlier, check the uh, description there. I'll have links to uh, the airbags, the compressor, and then that uh, micro... Uh, add a circuit fuse as well off of Amazon. So check that out. And if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to my channel, check out all of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.